What was the strangest rule you had to follow when at a friend's house? Story 1. My friend's mom's boyfriend had one of those rooms we weren't allowed in for any reason. Problem was, it was the living room. It was impossible to get to the kitchen without going through that living room. Also couldn't reach the door to the backyard. So I never once entered the kitchen in that house, and any trips to the backyard meant walking out the front door and going through the gate on the side of the house. In addition to these ridiculous rules, he insisted that if his daughter was going to come to my house for a sleepover, then I had to go to their house. Every other sleepover had to be at their house with his ridiculous rules. Every other friend bailed. I think the no TV was the deal breaker. But as young girls, the no giggling probably also played a role. I can still close my eyes and picture that ape of a man losing his shit and screaming at other people's children for giggling. Anyway, I did it. I stuck it out. Because my friend needed somewhere else to go and I could do that for her. Story 3. Your butt must be in the dinner chair at 6 p.m. sharp, even if dinner is not quite ready. No speaking at the dinner table unless asked a question by an adult. You must eat everything on your plate and cannot ask for seconds. No leaving the table before the father, you could hear the capital F, dismisses you. Coming from a family where dinner was a joyful affair, where everybody talked about their day, I was shocked. Story 4 Friends' family had this nice house with a nicely finished walkout basement with a kitchen, main area, bathroom, and two bedrooms. It was furnished as if it was an apartment, and the entire family, including three kids, lived down there full time, while the four bedroom upstairs was fully furnished, and they would only use the main part of the house if they were hosting company. It was bizarre going over there, because we'd get in trouble if we tried to play in the big, unused part of the house. When I asked him why they all lived in the basement, he said his mom doesn't want to have to clean it all the time, so they just didn't use their big house. It was so weird. Story 5 They had a strict rule that you had to go to the bathroom in the backyard, not in the house. My six-year-old sister discovered the reason for the rule after she peed her pants while frantically running through the house looking for a toilet. They didn't have a bathroom. Story 6 At a friend's house, I was asked to pay for dinner. I thought it was a joke but they legitimately asked me to bring money next time if I expected to eat. They said it didn't have to be the exact amount. Same family asked me to bring my own sheets, blankets, and pillowcases because they thought it was more sanitary than me using theirs. They were especially worried about pillowcases. Be clear, these were nice people. Story 7. Children could only drink warm Kool-Aid or water. You couldn't put it in the fridge. You couldn't use ice cubes. It had to be room temperature. Any child that came over had an assigned solo cup with their name in permanent marker. You had to wash and reuse the same solo cup over and over. Story 8 Once at a friend's house, I helped her set the table, and her whole family reacted with surprise and laughter at how I set the table, with the knife and spoon on the right and fork on the left, because they always set it the opposite way. They thought it was hilarious that I had learned it backwards. Story 9 Not a friend's house, but a girlfriend's dad's house. He was pretty well off, but cheap AF. The rule was if you went into the bathroom to pee and the bowl water was fresh, you didn't flush. I was not aware of the yellow is mellow and brown goes down rule till after I used the bathroom and flushed. My girlfriend heard the toilet flush and gave me the heads up. Apparently, he would spot check the bathrooms and flush them when he felt they needed. Story 10 mil, deaf not a friend. Breakfast is a full meal. And everyone eats together and at the same time. It's 8.30 a.m. Lunch is at 1 p.m., another full meal. Snack is at 4 p.m., always includes alcohol. Dinner is at 7 p.m., another full meal. At each meal, they say grace. Mill goes to bed as soon as she finishes eating dinner, and someone else is to clean up. A full meal means meat and three side dishes. One is always fruit. If any food is left over from the previous meal, it is served at the next meal the same day along with all the food that's freshly prepared. If you're not hungry when she declares it's food time, you have to eat anyway. And if you are hungry when she hasn't declared it to be a meal time, you aren't allowed to eat. Story 11 My friend's dad was divorced and lived in a big house with his new GF. He made women wear their hair up at dinner. We had to wait for him to sit before we could start eating. We could not leave until he was done. 
We weren't allowed to speak unless her dad asked us a question. We got in trouble for playing outside in the yard without permission. As punishment, we had to clean his shoes. I said something to my friend like, Is this how your dad always is? And he heard me and told me if I spoke about him again, he would slap me across the face. Story 12. In second grade, I went to my new friend's house, and their whole house was split up by the inside half and the outside half. Inside equal sign the hallway to the bedrooms and bathrooms, and outside equal sign the living room and kitchen areas. The children were supposed to stay inside until dinner time when we could go back outside to eat together. It was absolutely whack, and I never went there again. Anyway, the dad ended up trying to kill his whole family with a flamethrower years later and shot himself in the head, but lived. And their dog had worms. Story 13 I had a friend whose mom was very strict about power usage. They were far from struggling, but she would still shut off the power to every room beside the kitchen, and maybe things like the AC heater and water heater at night for some reason. At first, I thought it was due to noise or something, but my friend confirmed it was just something she did all the time. Story 14 rule. Blankets are only allowed to be used on the bed. I spent the night there only once because they kept their house freezing cold in the middle of winter and had me sleeping on the couch in the basement. I wore my winter coat to bed and used his coat as a blanket. I was nine or ten yo and it was fucking miserable. Story 15. I wiped my mouth on the provided cloth napkin. I thought they must be very fancy. We used paper napkins at our house. I looked up and they were all staring at me. Those are decorative. The next morning, the mom pulled out her food journal and laid it open so we could see how little she had eaten. We ignored it, so she felt she had to announce it. I've only had an apple and a low-fat string cheese today. Daughter, have you and your friend been pigging out? Yet it was cool to let us speculate as to whether the hot tub was safe to enter because her brother liked to watch, and he liked to have relations with the intake valves after he watched. I didn't stay over again. Story 16 At my childhood best friend's house, I had to wear disposable shoe covers over my shoes or socks and rubber gloves, and I wasn't allowed to sit on any of the furniture because her mom didn't want me touching anything. I was the only one who had to do this. Her brother, cousins, or her other friends didn't have to. Just me. I visited her house six times before my mom was like, No, you're not going there to stand around like a statue. B comes here to play, or you two don't play at all. I found out years later after my friend's mom died, it was because she didn't like white people. I was my friend's only white friend. I also discovered that if she visited my house, she would go home and her mom would scrub her down in the shower. Story 17 I stayed with people off the grid. They're obsessed with saving any type of fuel. When the moon is full, we weren't allowed to use any light at night, even flashlight. I wasn't even allowed to use my own light, light from my phone or my flashlight, because it ruins their ability to see in the dark. Probably not strange in their world, but strange for a city boy like me. Story 18 my friend's mom would yell at us for swimming because we would make her have to do laundry, and was all the towels. She would then tell us we can't sit inside and play video games all day long. So we would leave and usually go to my house, which also had video games and a pool. She would then call my mom and yell at her if we were playing video games or swimming. After like two of these calls, my mom never would answer her calls. Story 19. Well, it wasn't a rule, but I had a friend who never freaking had toilet paper. Also, they threw their feminine hygiene products under the sink, and they had a horrible picking G's dog that attacked anyone that set a foot on the floor. I only stayed there once, but she stayed with me all the time, and she and I are still very good friends. Story 21. When I was like 11 or so, a couple friends, they were twins, invited a bunch of us over to their house for a sleepover board game night. When we got there, their mom told us that we wouldn't be allowed to play any games that involved any kind of magic or combat because she thought they were satanic. I think we ended up playing Monopoly, because honestly, if you take out every game that thematically contains any combat or magic whatsoever, there's only traditional board games left. I do remember we also played a bunch of the Batman NES game. Somehow a costumed lunatic beating the crap out of criminals as a video game wasn't objectionable while playing Hero Quest crossed a line. Story 22 
I was 11 and spent the weekend at a friend's house. Her mom got us, me, my friend, and her nine-yo brother, up super early. After breakfast, she told us we had to go outside, and no matter what, we couldn't come back in until 6 p.m. I asked her what we were supposed to do for 12 hours. She said, have fun. She left a pitcher of water and three cups on the porch swing and locked us out. Apparently, they were used to being locked out all day every Saturday and Sunday while their mom was in the house alone. I went to her neighbor's house and called my mom to come get me. Story 23. This might be sad. I had a babysitter and I was friends with her kids, I guess. When I got there, I had to sit on a mat beside the couch all day when her kids played, often W any toys I brought. Once they said it was okay to play W them, so I did, and I got yelled at to sit back on the mat. I had to nap there with a sheet over my head. At lunchtime, the family would eat at the table and I had to sit on the floor next to the fridge. I asked for a glass of water once and they all laughed at me. This is what I remember. I was young. I never really think about this or tell this story, but I guess it was weird. Story 24 I stayed a couple of days at a friend's house when I returned to visit my hometown once, and she took me aside and spoke to me because her husband was upset that I didn't dry the shower with my towel after I was finished showering and drying myself. The explanation was that it eliminated the possibility of mold. They had a nice house, and I don't really think mold was an issue. I apologized for my ignorance and dried the shower with my towel for the remainder of my stay. I've never done that anywhere else before or since. Is this really a thing? Am I an unwitting barbarian? All right, I'll throw a sweet one in here to break up the depressing stories. At my best friend's house growing up, whenever we would swing by her house, her abuela, who raised her, would always have a plate of hot, fresh food for us and had us sit down and eat it before doing anything else. Not in an abusive, mess-with-your-relationship-with-food kind of way, but in a abuela made you some food and it's the best food you have ever eaten and it was made with so much love. Food was her love language. And even though she only speaks Spanish, I didn't. You always felt loved when you went to her house, and that was never lost in translation. I still miss her tamales, belatedly realizing this sounds depressing since it sounds like she is dead. She isn't. I just moved. Story 26 We had to go to bed at 9 p.m. sharp. She lived in the country, so she didn't get home off the bus until 4.30 to 5 p.m. Dinner was probably an hour. Then we got up at 8, 8.30 a.m., ate breakfast, and she immediately made me pack up, insisted I never leave anything at their home, and dropped me off at my house by 10 a.m. I could only come over on a Friday. I didn't like being pushed out like that. I left my hairbrush at their house once. They immediately returned it by leaving it on the front porch as we weren't home. I had other hairbrushes, and it could have waited until Monday on the bus or at school. The mom didn't like me. She literally said I wasn't decent. I was 10 years old. Edit, typo, and clarity. Story 27. Spent the night at a friend of a friend's house. Their very enormous house. Straight up mansion in the middle of freaking nowhere farm area. The thing was large enough you could ride a bike down one of the hallways that spanned the whole thing. My friend was friends with this surprisingly likable girl. A lot of the rich kids in my school were assholes, even at a young age. We spent the night playing in her gigantic bedroom and finished basement and got called to dinner. Dinner was like an elegant thing to these people. Manners are fine and all, but like, don't use that fork to eat the salad. No elbows on the table. No laughing. We were all kids doing kid things. We didn't have table manners like that, and we got all sorts of weird looks from this girl's parents whenever we did something incorrect. There was maybe ten of us there, and only a few of us, the few that were closest friends to the rich girl, knew what freaking fork or spoon to use and such. It was just so awkward and embarrassing. Story 28 wasn't super weird, but friend was have a double B day with him and his sister, so a few boys and a few girls were over the same night. The rule was, boys couldn't go into the girls' room and girls couldn't go into the boys' room. One of the boys ran into the girls' room and they made him sit in time out. It was just awkward for like 10 mins while we all just stood there. Rest of the night was fine. I remember watching Batman Forever. Story 29. So my aunt and uncle both have OCD, and it got worse as they got older, but they'd want to host everyone during the holidays. 
but we weren't allowed to sit in one area that was immaculately decorated, which was an issue because people then had to sit on the floor. The kitchen could be used, but my aunt didn't really want it to be used because it would become dirty. The bedroom I stayed in had to be kept as is. She had like ten decorative pillows on the bed, which I moved. And every day she'd come in, put them back on, and tell me to sleep carefully so I don't ruin the look. Rules were never given, but everyone sort of knew what they were supposed to do or not do at my aunt and uncle's place. Story 30 My buddy's eight-year-old birthday party sleepover. The dad told us not to get out of bed at night. I got up to pee and he came running out when he heard me walking around looking for a bathroom where I wouldn't wake anyone up. He freaked and made me sit at the dining room table until my dad could come get me at 2 a.m. 45-minute drive. Another kid got the same treatment when he went to use the bathroom and we were forbidden from ever coming back. It was really fun times until then. I forgot to add that it went from party time dad to everyone get to bed, lights out, no noise, and don't get out of bed until morning. It was so abrupt that it confused me, and I didn't take it seriously. Story 31. My next door neighbor had grandparents down the street, and it was a really fancy house. We were not allowed to walk on their grass. We could not ride a bike on their grass or driveway. They were excessively worried about marks of any kind. The front door was never to be used. The swimming pool was for looks and not use. They also refused to use the garage for vehicles because of the potential for tire marks on the driveway and garage floor. One of their kids ended up moving back so the garage was turned into a shitty bedroom because they didn't want him sleeping in the house. All their cars were parked on the street and it was a slow curve. Eventually, their vet was carved up with a knife by an annoyed neighbor.